I call on government orders of the day numbers one to three. Residential tenancies prohibiting letting fees amendment bill committee stage. Family and whanau violence legislation bill committee stage. Telecommunications new regulatory framework amendment bill committee stage continued. I declare the House and Committee for consideration of the Residential Tenancies Prohibiting Letting Fees Amendment Bill and the Family and Whanau Violence Legislation Bill and for order and for further consideration of the Telecommunications New Regulatory Framework Amendment Bill. Madam Chair. Mr. In committee for consideration of the residential tenancies prohibiting letting fees amendment bill and the family and Fano violence legislation bill and for further consideration of the telecommunications new regulatory framework amendment bill members we come first to the residential tenancies prohibiting letting fees amendment bill the question is that part one stand part I call the Honourable Louise Upston. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. And I'm pleased to uh, stand uh, for what will be a number of calls in this residential tenancies uh, prohibiting letting fees amendment bill. Uh, Madam Chair, I want to um, focus my efforts uh, in the first uh, part of this uh, legislation and to put on record a few of the myths uh, that the government have been spreading around this particular part um, of the legislation. And the first myth is that this will do anything to alleviate the pressure uh, on renters, uh, because it absolutely has zero guarantee of doing that. Uh, in, in effect, the, um, the RIS, or the Regulatory Impact Statement, uh, that was prepared in association with this uh, bill, uh, clearly states that one of the risks uh, of this particular legislation in that a letting fee will be prohibited is that the equivalent of that letting fee, which in some cases might be a week's rent, that will be spread out over the term of the tenancy and could be um, up to or around $10 a week additional rent that the tenant will now have to pay. Um, so it is concerning that um, it's, it's a bit of a... You know, it's residential tenancies prohibiting letting fees amendment bill, uh, and the intent of it might be acceptable, but the po um, this legislation will not deliver on any policy promise um, to take financial pressure off tenants. Um, the other thing, um, Madam Chair, that I wanted to address, uh, given that we only had the second reading of this piece of legislation last week, is um, the incredibly compressed time frame for which uh, landlords will have to adjust to changes uh, proposed by this legislation. So if I, if I look at part one specifically, uh, a letting fee is any fee or charge in respect of services rendered by the letting agent. So, so basically what it means, if, if a landlord engages a professional property manager. And we do know, Madam, Madam Chair, that the vast majority of landlords in New Zealand um, are what we call mum and dad uh, investors, and they might have one or two rental properties. So actually, in many cases, it's a good idea for the landlord to engage professional services um, of a property management uh, company or a property manager uh, as an individual who can help them navigate what is um, actually quite a challenging piece of legislation to ensure they comply with it. And I haven't met any landlords, any uh, investors that don't want to ensure that they comply with the legislation. But we're seeing series of changes um, to the residential tenancies uh, legislation. And uh, this is another one. And their ability to engage a property manager and then uh, the property manager charge a letting fee at the start of a tenancy to get uh, new tenants in the property, that's the bit that's going to be prohibited. So if a landlord still wants to have a property manager deliver that service, uh, and, and, and I'm hopeful that many will, because it does add uh, some comfort uh, to the tenants as well as the landlord, 
that their ability to recover the costs of that then get spread over the term of the tenancy. So if that's a tenancy for a one year, it might end up being about the same amount of cost. But if the tenancy is three or four or five years, that extra $10 a week will be exorbitantly more than the letting fee would have been originally. So I just wanted to be clear in this part one um, of what seems to be a straightforward piece of legislation but does have a significant impact. Uh, the reality is for, for those who are going to be captured by this legislation, um, there's an incredibly short time frame for them to adjust to it. And one of the examples that was provided uh, through the process that the Select Committee considered um, was the fact that this has been done in Scotland. But actually other parts of the UK have decided not to take this step because of the wide-ranging concern about the increase in rents. And uh, I believe Statistics New Zealand have just put out the Household uh, Incomes Report which has said incomes have gone up 41% since 2008, housing costs have gone up 43%. Um, so there is a continued pressure on households for housing costs. And I would have thought any measure, Madam Chair, Madam Chair? I call the Honourable Louise Upston. I would have thought any measure that uh, leads to the risk of an increase in rent is something that this government would want to run a mile from. And they, they are, to be fair, to, be, you know, to give credit where credit's due, the government is undertaking um, a significant review of the Residential Tenancies Act, one of the many working groups that the government has underway. And so it's somewhat puzzling that the government decided to do this piece of legislation in isolation. And what it might mean is that you've got this piece of legislation that is out there and has an impact um, on removing the ability or uh, a disincentive for landlords to engage a letting agent, to engage in professional services that support them in, in setting up their tenancy and getting the right tenant in the first place. Uh, and then on the other hand, or oh, and adds costs, and on the other hand, this more wide-ranging review of residential tenancies that might work in a completely opposite direction. So if, for the matter of a couple of months, because I think the, the tenancy one and the minister hopefully will be able to answer this when he answers the question, is why was this not brought into the broader piece of review uh, that the minister is undertaking? So I do specifically want the, the minister to address the timing of it uh, and the fact that it is coming in on the, the 12th of December, which is a very short period of time for uh, landlords to adjust. And as I said, the majority of landlords in New Zealand are not uh, what the government might um, suggest from time to time as being fat cat landlords that are out to milk their tenants. Uh, that is not uh, the majority of landlords. Yep, there might be one or two that don't look after their tenants in the way they should. And absolutely, the government should take steps to crack down on them. Um, but the majority of landlords in New Zealand are mum and dad investors with one, possibly two properties. Um, and to navigate the residential tenancies legislation to ensure that they are providing warm, dry uh, rental property for their tenants. Uh, and of course, there are, there's been recent changes that's, that have also had a big impact um, on them. Then it is really important to make sure that they do have the ability uh, in terms of, in this particular legislation, a fee or charge um, that is now not able to be charged by a letting agent passed on to uh, a tenant at the start of the tenancy, but instead what the landlord is likely to do is to recover the cost of that property manager's professional services uh, over the term of the tenancy. And, and one of the other comparisons, uh, Madam Chair, is uh, regarding countries in Europe, I think Germany was one of the ones that was referred to, where the average tenancy in Germany is 14 years. Now, I'm not sure if the Minister is able to answer a question in terms of the average length of tenancies in New Zealand and what this $10 a week added um, cost 
will mean over the lifetime of a tenancy, but I think that's an important uh, element of it. And one of the aspects in the regulatory impact statement was there was insufficient time for adequate consultation to be undertaken. Now, this unfortunately is a bit of a, um, a similarity that is appearing in many of the government's legislation. Um, the oil and, bas oil and gas ban that is also going through committee at this stage uh, is exactly the same, which means insufficient scrutiny, insufficient consultation, insufficient ability for uh, any unintended consequences to be um, thought through and resolved. And instead, we have a situation like this, uh, where in part one of the residential tenancies prohibiting letting fees, um, the unintended consequences as stated in the regulatory impact statement are likely to be an increase in rent for the very people that the government purports to want to support in this legislation. So you can't, the government can't have it both ways. And so I, I am looking forward to the Minister answering um, the specific questions that I've asked um, so far. As I said, it's a small bill, but not an insignificant one, and that's why, Madam Chair, uh, it deserves the full scrutiny of the House, um, particularly when it will be implemented very quickly uh, with very little time for those to adjust. Uh, we argued strongly in the opposition to uh, have a later implementation date, um, but the Government has proceeded anyway. Dr. The Honourable Nick Smith. Thank you, uh, Madam Chair.